In this series of videos, we've been talking about activity-based costing. In the first video, I went over some concepts around activity-based costing. In the second, we started a problem, and we actually didn't do any activity-based costing in part one, but now we're gonna do part two, and we're gonna look at activity-based costing for this company. So let's go back up to the question, and we've done part one. We've computed the predetermined overhead rate as well as the unit product cost. Now we're gonna do part two. And part two of the question says, Assume that the company shifts to activity-based costing. Compute the activity rate for each of the activity cost pools and determine the amount of overhead costs that would be applied to each model using activity-based costing. Whew, a bit of a mouthful, but actually not too difficult. The company has divided its overhead. It had uh, $600,000 of overhead, and it's divided it into these three pools. It said, look, we have different kinds of overhead. We want to say that they have different drivers and we're going to treat them all different. And so it has these three types of overhead. But you can see if we add up 150 plus 90 plus 360, it is still $600,000 in overhead, same as before. And they've just sort of said, we're going to split it up differently. So rather than taking all of our overhead and dividing it by the number of uh, labor hours, we want to look at it in different terms. So they're saying our parts overhead we want to divide by the number of parts and say the parts are our cost driver. For product testing, it's the number of tests. And for machine or fa for factory, it's the number of machine hours. So let's do a bit of math here and let's get an overhead rate for each of these areas. 150 divided by 1,000 equals $150 per part. And again, the math there is 150,000 divided by 1,000. Uh, so again, our estimated overhead divided by our estimated base. But rather than doing one overhead rate, we're gonna do one for each. So again, estimated MOH divided by estimated total driver of MOH. So the number of parts drives our parts overhead. The number of tests drives our test overhead. So our overhead for tests is $90,000 divided by 500 tests, 90,000, divided by 500 is, um, hmm, I'm not sure, let's see, 18, $180, I believe. 180 bucks per test. General factory overhead, $360,000, divided by 5,000. 360 divided by 5,000. I gotta, I gotta use a calculator, I'm gonna get this wrong. 360 divided by 5,000. I shouldn't do math in my head. It is 72. That would have been my guess, honest. $72 per machine hour. Okay, so we've computed our activity rates now. We said, okay, for parts, it's 150,000 over 1,000 parts. It's $150 a part. So if I have a job that takes three parts, I'll charge it $450. Uh, product testing, 90,000 divided by 500 tests, $180 per test. Well, if I have a product that I have to test once, that's $180, I'll charge the job. Uh, machine hours are $72 per machine hour. So rather than using one overhead rate, we're gonna use three. So now, and so to answer our questions, uh, we are doing part two. It says compute the activity rate for each of the activity cost pools done, right? It's 150 per part, 180 per test, and 72 per machine hour. Uh, now it says, determine the amount of overhead costs that would be applied to each model using activity-based costing. All right, so what we want to say is, okay, if the Z100 actually does, we do 250 parts related to the Z100, and the cost is $150 a part, how much of the cost will land on the Z100? It's 250 times 150. We'll do the same for the Z200, it'll be 750 times 150. And we're just gonna do a big chart to figuring out which costs go where. So that's our next step. That's the, the conclusion to part 2A, and we'll do it on a little blank sheet here. So 2A, and I'll just reiterate the activity rates were 150 per part, 180 per test, and 72 per machine hour. So now let's look at our Z100 and our Z200. 
200 and our Z100 had 250 tests and it caught or oh did I do that backwards 250 parts pardon me let me erase that So 250 parts, and it costs $150 per part. So 150 times 250 equals, uh, and I'm going to need my calculator for that one, 150 times 250, 37,500. Now for our Z200, we said we had 750 um, parts. So I'm going to multiply 150 times 750. So 150 times 750 equals 112,500. All right, so, so far so good. Now let's do it with our test. We're just going to say, okay, it's 180 bucks a test, and we're going to do uh, 350 tests. So 180 times 350 is 63,000. And for the Z200, it took 150 tests. So 180 times 150 equals, oops, the wrong thing there. Uh, 180 times 150 is 27,000. $72 per machine hour, and the uh, Z100 takes 2,000 machine hours. So 2,000 times 72, I think it's 144,000, but I'm feeling insecure. 2,000 times 72, yeah, it is for sure. 144,000 and our Z200 took 3,000 machine hours so we'll do the math there 3,000 times 72 216,000 machine hours I do believe so we've got our overhead and we said this is how much overhead the Z100 should take and this is how much over the Z200 should take but we got to total it so let's total the overhead So let's again pull out the calculator tool. 37,500 plus 63,000 plus 144 equals 244,500. Um, doing the other side of this. Oops, come on, you. 112,500 plus 27,000 plus 216,000 is 355,500. And a little trick you can do here is just add these up and they should total our estimated overhead. Oops, I always put in numbers up here. I'm not supposed to be doing that. I want to put them in here. So let's do a bit of math. Uh, 355,500 plus 244500 is indeed $600,000 and 600,000 was our estimated overhead. So again, if we actually ended up using the exact amount of parts and uh, tests and machine hours we thought, of course we're going to hit our estimated uh, we're going to match up our estimated overhead there. Okay. 
So we're through this part and now I want to figure out the cost of the product. So I know the cost of any product is the cost of the material. I'm leaving a bit of room because I'm going to do some more work up here. But I know the cost of any product is the cost of the material, the labor, and the overhead. And I've got to do it for the Z100 and the Z200. So the Z100's material and labor costs are just given, and it doesn't matter what method we use, whether we're doing activity-based costing or some other traditional costing with a plant-wide overhead rate. The Z100 is 45 and 30 for materials and for labor. The Z200 is 60 and 40. So fill those in, 45 and 30 versus 60 and 40. Now if I were to fill in the overhead, based on what I see, I see the Z 100 is 244,000 and the Z200 is 355,000. Those numbers wouldn't make any sense, right? If I wrote 244, 500, it's just way out of whack. What we need is an overhead rate per unit, not in totals. So I'm going to divide by the number of units. And in the case of the Z100, we were planning on selling, uh, let's see, Z100, we're going to make. 30,000 units and the Z200 15. So for the Z100 I'll divide by 30,000 units and for the Z200 15,000 units. So let's figure that out. 244 500 divided by 30,000 units equals $8.15 per unit and for the Z200 355 500 divided by 15,000 units equals 23.7 $23.70 Per unit. So when I add these together, or when I combine these into my uh, chart here, eight dollars and fifteen cents per unit of Z100, twenty-three dollars seventy cents per unit of Z200. I'm going to total this all up. Sixty and forty and twenty-three is one twenty-three seventy. Forty-five and thirty and eight fifteen. Uh, 83.15. I always like to put dollar signs at the top and bottom and I'll double underline this bottom. It's cost. Okay, so we've completed part two of the question. We figured out the cost of the per unit of the product. Not just the MOH cost to be applied but the actual cost per unit and the costs are 83 bucks for the Z100 and just about 124 bucks for the Z200. Now what you find here is the numbers are different, right? The Z200 are under traditional costing only cost us 116 and the Z100 only cost us or cost us 87. Now the Z100 costs us less and the Z200 costs us more under activity based costing. So something that we want to figure out and actually it's gotten at in question three Question three says, under traditional costing, is the model Z100 overcosted or undercosted, and by how much? Well, let's see. Under traditional costing, the Z100 costs 87 bucks. Under activity-based costing, it costs 83 bucks. So under traditional costing, costing 87 bucks, I would call that overcosted. It costs about four dollars too much. So under traditional costing, we would say that the Z100 is over costed and the amount is actually not four bucks but it's 385 and that's just the difference between 87 dollars and 8315 87 minus 8315 is three dollars 85 cents uh, now let's let's answer the next part of the question under traditional costing is the Z200 over costed or under costed by how much well, the Z200 costs 116 under the uh, old method, 
and 12370 under the new method. The difference is $7.70. I've got to say, is it overcosted or undercosted under the old method? Well, it was 116 before. We do the new, more accurate method, it's 123. The Z100, or Z200, pardon me, let me erase that. The Z200 is undercosted by $7.70. Now, that's it. That's kind of the end of the question. If a company has a really miscosted product, it's going to result in some bad decision making, right? In reality, the Z, if, if they were using this system and they thought the Z200 cost them 116 bucks, that would mean they would think the Z200 is more profitable than it really was. And conversely, they would think the Z100 was less profitable than it really was. And that has real world implications. If you're the product manager of the Z100, your profits are actually going to Z200. You're, you're subsidizing the Z200 and vice versa. If you're the Z200, you're being subsidized by the Z100. So if you're being evaluated on your profitability or how well your division's doing, the Z100 is uh, getting hurt by the Z200 in, under this scenario. Uh, it can also affect the pricing decision. You know, we could misprice a product, uh, but having wrong cost information is really alarming and really problematic. Um, now, again, in if, if most real companies use this method, this method, the traditional one overhead rate method, and you might say, well, why? If activity-based costing is so much, uh, like gives you so much more accurate numbers, why doesn't every company use it? Well, the reality is the amount of information you have to gather for activity-based costing makes it very expensive very time consuming and it's actually very difficult to do. It's easy to do in these accounting problems where we have all the information at our fingertips. In reality there's a lot more information to be gathered. So most companies don't do activity based costing. I think it's a good exercise and it's good to understand what's happening but just know in reality most companies use one plant-wide overhead rate uh, to apply overhead costs to uh, products. Okay, we're going to leave activity-based costing there. I, th I hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, that's it for this time. Uh, and stay tuned for our next batch of videos.